guys so I wanted to make a quick video a lot of people ask if your God is so good then why does he send people to hell and I have had a hard time answering that a lot in the past and I actually heard someone say I don't even know who she was but it, I heard it online somewhere and it was the best analogy I have ever heard to explain it. I thought it was beautiful the way it was said. And I hope this might give you some clarity and that just show you like how great our God is and how merciful he is. So yeah, in the Bible it talks about us being Jesus' bridegroom. Like he always compares us to the bride. Whoever's watching, I'm just gonna say for because how Jesus ended up with the analogy i'm just gonna say whoever's watching i'm sorry if it's a guy watching but um just put yourself in, in the opposite shoes so imagine you are set up in an arranged marriage okay say it's like a different country or like back then just pretend, just go, just hang out with me you're set up for an arranged marriage your groom is like a so much in love with you they know you they've studied you like they've known you your whole life they've fallen madly in love with you and they cannot wait to marry you on that day you know them you you know you heard about him around the block you know your wedding day is coming up but you don't feel the same way about him and you're like Ugh you're gonna do it anyways just because you feel forced to but he keeps pursuing you anyways because he loves you so much and you keep denying him because you're just like oh, I don't love you I don't love you and you keep pushing him away even though you're you know you're supposed to get married to him you just keep pushing him away no matter how hard he tries to show you his love for you his unconditional selfless love he puts his own feelings aside and he shows you his love for you over and over and over you reject him over and over and over even though you know you're supposed to get married to him so your wedding day comes up you still tell him you don't want him you don't want to marry him but you're gonna do it anyways because you don't love him you don't want to be with him so on that day he decides to let you go he says he would rather let you go he loves you so much that instead of forcing you into a marriage with him forever which is clearly something that you've stated over and over and over that you wanted nothing to do with he would rather let you go even though it's killing him inside to let you go he would rather do that because he knows that you would just resent him for the rest of your life for forcing you into something that you wanted nothing to do with so even though it broke his heart, he let you go. So that, my friends, is Jesus. There is, tr there is only one truth. There is heaven or there is hell. Hell is just separated from God for eternity. He does not want to send you there. It's, hell is separation from God for eternity. That's what hell is. And he has given us free will because he loves us. Do you want a God that forces you, that pre-programs you to love him? No. He wants us to freely choose to love Him. He created us all to love Him and worship Him. But we get to choose 
if we want to or not. We get to choose. And he's not going to force you into heaven. And you know, and we give so much credit. Everyone, bad things happen in this world all the time. Everyone blames it on God. But no one blames Satan. Satan's responsible for most of everything bad. You don't hear anyone saying, why does Satan do that? No, they blame God. Why is it nobody talking about how crappy Satan is to everybody? God's the fixer, the healer, the lover. He wants to hold you. We have crap in this world and sin because of Satan, not because of God. And he is going to fix this world once it, this world is finished. He is going to make it whole like he wanted to from the beginning. And he is going to lock Satan up for good. He's gonna eventually destroy him, but I'm just saying, he's gonna lock him up for a while first. He gives people free will. And why, why am I so adamant about talking about Jesus over and over and over? Why does it sound like I'm being pushy? I'm not trying to push my religion on anybody. I'm just trying to give you the information. You don't have to take it. I have a platform. I'm going to use it to spread his love and you can take it or you can leave it. It's up to you. But there is going to be a judgment day. And on that judgment day, I do not want to get to the, to the throne. And Jesus says, come on, come on hope. And then my friend next to me is sentenced to hell. And my friend there that's sentenced to hell is looking at me, bawling, and looking at me, screaming, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me about Jesus? Why didn't you tell me? You could have told me this whole time, but you didn't tell me the truth. And now I'm going to hell because of you. So that's my spiel. And so if you if you want to ensure that you're going to go to heaven and live forever with Jesus and not be separated from God for eternity, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. Truly believe, not just say the words, but believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died on the cross for your sin and rose again on the third day and call on his name and ask him to live in your heart he will save you so if you would like you can say a prayer with me and ask him into your heart it's not hard he makes the gospel so easy a child can understand and it's no coincidence that he calls us to have faith like a child it's not people try to pervert the gospel because of Satan Satan tries to pervert the gospel and in turn people try to break it down theologically make it in, in like with their intellectual minds it must it must be harder than that like there's no way you can just say Jesus I believe in you, forgive me. I believe in you. Come into my heart and that's it. There's no way, but that is, that's it. And he's not an Indian giver. He's not gonna take it away from something you did. Yes, he calls us to repent daily, but you will automatically want to do that if you're truly saved. You'll have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. You'll feel guilty. You'll feel the difference between right and wrong. He'll guide you. And when you mess up, He'll let you know. <laughs> because you'll feel it. When you mess up, you'll know. And He'll guide you to do what's right and wrong. And He'll let you know. 
when it's time for you to get baptized. You don't have to be baptized to get into heaven. He wants you to do it. He commands us to do it. But that's not your way into heaven. But he'll prompt you to do those things. And you'll want to do it because you love him. So I'm going to invite you to say the prayer with me. And he'll guide you the rest of the way. Jesus, I want to invite you to come and live in my heart. I admit that I am a sinner. I know that I cannot do this on my own anymore. Jesus, I believe that you are Lord. I believe that you died on the cross for my sin. I believe in your resurrection that you died and you rose again on the third day. I want you to come and live in my heart. Help me turn from my sin and live with me forever so that I might have eternal life with you, Father. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And that is it. Welcome to the family of Christ. And I will see you in heaven. Bye. Imperfectly perfect, you're perfect. And you know you're worth it. No one can take your place. No, you don't have to change. You're perfect. Imperfectly perfect.